Aloha Vacationers. We hope you're having a wonderful time in paradise. Outrigger Resort Club by Wyndham can help you keep the fun going. Hawaiian souvenir at our desk next to the activity center. Mahalo! Seven thousand years ago, the first really oceanic people came out of China and it came out of Taiwan. Thousands years after that, spreading through the Pacific Islands in Melanesia, even in Indonesia. Then you get to Polynesia, this oceanic country bounded by Hawaii in the north and New Zealand in the southwest and Rapa Nui in the east. 10 million square miles, 600 times more water than this land, biggest country on earth, bigger than Russia. And it was discovered by these extraordinary people. They were the greatest explorers on the face of the earth. These extraordinary explorers accomplished these amazing feats without the use of modern instruments, but by relying solely on an innate connection to the winds, waves, and the stars. With the passing of time and the arrival of modern ships and tools, however, the traditional knowledge and practice of celestial navigation and voyaging was nearly lost in Hawaii. But in the 1970s, during a period now referred to as the Hawaiian Renaissance, a group of men formed the Polynesian Voyaging Society to resurrect this ancient wisdom. My own personal interest was in rebuilding what I saw to be the central object of Polynesian culture. Why central? Because were it not for that object, there would be no Polynesians today. Raindrops, they hamper my vision. Falling down and cutting incision. On May 1st, 1976, Hokulea began her epic voyage, a 2,500 mile journey from Hawaii to Tahiti. Hokulea, Hokulea, star of gladness, you're the happy star. Oh, Hokulea, star of gladness. After 31 days at sea, Hokulea made landfall in a glorious arrival witnessed by more than 17,000 Tahitians. The pathway to Tahiti had been reopened and something long dormant began to stir in the hearts and minds of all Polynesians. It gave us a kind of hope that the beauty of our culture, the wisdom of our ancestors, could lead us out of this great deficit that we had fallen into. Over the next 30 years, Hokulea traveled throughout the Pacific to Samoa, Tonga, Rarotonga, and Aotearoa. And in 1999, Hokulea sailed to Rapa Nui, the single most isolated landmass on the planet. 25 years of relearning navigation and voyaging reunited the great nation of Polynesia and inspired renewed interest in other cultural practices, language, dance, and traditional arts. Hokulea's ability to revive and heal is now guiding her next journey that will cover more than 46,000 nautical miles and reach over 80 ports and 26 countries around the world. I mean, the Worldwide Voyage began as an idea. It came from our teachers from the past. It's about bringing community together around common values which you believe in, whether it's culture, whether it's protection of the oceans, whether it's about making sure we have mechanisms that teach leadership to young people. I mean, the journey of the Worldwide Voyage is all about learning in just infinite, extraordinary ways. Every one of us that will be participating go as students and that when we come home, 
So the journey doesn't end. In some ways, it just begins. My name is Lynn Cook and uh, we are in the lobby of the wonderful Outrigger Waikiki on the beach. I teach a class here about petroglyphs. A petroglyph is uh, a ki'i pohaku. Ki'i is an image, pohaku is a rock. So it's carved in stone. The Hawaiian petroglyphs were carved about 2,000 years ago they started. Uh, when the voyaging canoes are being built, they go out to the petroglyph fields and look at the diagrams left 2,000 years ago. And they tell us how the canoe worked and what worked with it, and also how they lived. They voyaged all over the world and they left records of things like kite fishing. The kite was woven and the Senate line was woven very fine to fly the kite. But there was a second line that was attached and when they would fly the kite out over the ocean, they jerk the first line and it would let go. The kite would continue to fly. The fishing line would fall into the ocean. So they basically deep sea fished in the ocean from the shore. This is a man on a surfboard. Our first surfboards were carved about 2,000 years ago. And this is a long line, like a long line fisherman, with multiple fish hooks. So they would surf out there, standing on their board, drop the line, and then surf back. When they couldn't net fish, or the weather wasn't right, or they wanted a different kind of fish, they could do this. Mike's Huli Chicken was featured on an episode of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives with Chef Guy Fieri. So I'm here on the beautiful island of Oahu. I have driven by this place over a hundred times, and this is the place that inspired me to get my own Huli Huli Chicken machine. Ooh, what's that? Mike's Chicken Sauce. Dude, I am telling you what, this is even better than I remember it. That's right, this is the original Mike's Huli Huli Chicken. Check out the whole menu online at mikeshulichicken.com. For over 25 years, Hawaiian accessories have been designing and creating Hawaii's most distinctive collection of authentic koa wood products. We have the largest selection of original koa products available in Hawaii. Heirloom boxes, bowls, weapons, and paddles. Our exclusive koa jewelry offers unique Hawaiian designs at affordable family prices. We also carry other made in Hawaii products from several local artisans, including Niihau Shell Jewelry, Tahitian Pearl and Shell Jewelry, ceramics, and one-of-a-kind items. A koa gift from Hawaiian Accessories will forever remind you of these magical islands and be cherished for generations. You'll always receive a warm Hawaiian welcome at Hawaiian Accessories. Aloha. The art of kakao nakauhi, the art of tattooing, has been part of Hawaii ever since the first Polynesians came here. I never started tattooing to become a tattooist. I, I, that might sound odd, but it's the truth. I started doing the work to perpetuate the culture and not necessarily to be a tattooist. 
It's played a vital role within our society because it indicates rank for certain individuals. It indicates the willingness to sacrifice oneself uh, to a process. And that's the most important thing is, is to, to adhere to the cultural norms and the processes that was laid back thousands of years ago. It is not the people who are in the lower echelons of society that gets work done. Quite to the contrary, it's the people who are of the highest rank that has the most work done. This isn't about you, it's about your ancestors, it's about your children, it's about everybody that comes in that line. And you're just one small part of that. To actually have somebody lying in front of you and me doing the work recreates a scene that was done for thousands of years. And for me, that responsibility is both a blessing and a burden. There's very little in today's society that you can honestly say that this is exactly how it was two, three, four, five hundred, a thousand years ago. With this, you can say that. Aloha, and welcome to the Outrigger in world-famous Waikiki. You are just steps away from Duke's Waikiki, the heartbeat of our beach, and the most celebrated restaurant in town by locals and visitors alike. The legendary spirit of Hawaii's favorite son, Duke Kahanamoku, lives on here in our warm hospitality and fresh island flavors. It's the perfect place to take in the magic of Waikiki, sitting amongst Waikiki Beach Boys, indulging in a signature Mai Tai, or savoring an island dining experience unlike any other. For a special treat, top the night off with an original Kimo's hula pie, and time it right to catch a Duke's on Sunday performance by Henry Capono that will have you dancing as the sun sets behind the surfers. Duke. A true ambassador of the Aloha spirit taught us the beauty of welcoming you, our visitors, home to Hawaii. We look forward to celebrating life with you during your stay at the Outrigger and hope to see you downstairs for breakfast to hula pie. What happens when you get three Irish together on Oahu? $4 Killian's Irish Red. From opening time into the night, big frothy Killian's Irish Red beer, just four bucks at the three famous Irish watering holes. Kelly O'Neill's in the Irish Rose Saloon in Waikiki and O'Toole's Irish Pub downtown. This week, the red wave of Killian's at the three Irish, just four bucks, big ones. And what else? You'll love the friendly atmosphere. Enjoy. The $4 Killian's Red Wave, this week at Kelly O'Neill's, the Irish Rose and O'Toole's. Here at the Waikiki Beach Walk Plaza, our mission is really to promote the beauty of our culture and how we enjoy our music. La Mele No Napua translates to music for our generations, for it doesn't discriminate whether it's the past, the present, or the future. Because it's the heartbeat of Aloha, heartbeat of our people. It's a universal language and how we can share our culture with our visitors, even with our locals. And in the words of keeping it Hawaiian, keeping it local, keeping our music intact and making sure that we can benefit by sharing this with all of our generations, from the past, into the present, into the future, it's not always just about the music, but it's one way that people and our visitors can tap into our, our people through the music and be able to have that relationship and build that relationship over time. The 18th annual Duke's Ocean Fest, August 17th through 25th. Sign up now for our new events. Duke's Diamond Head Blue Water Paddleboard SUP Race. 32 Beach Boys compete for the bragging rights to be King of Queens Beach. Cheer on the Keiki in the Matson Menihuni Surf Fest. Bark with the dogs at Calvin and Susie's Going to the Dogs. And don't miss the Outrigger Hotels and Resorts Legend Surf Classic and more. Presented by Hawaii Tourism and support the Outrigger Duke Kahanamoku Foundation. Go to dukesoceanfest.com. 
Samoan fire knife dancing is uh, probably uh, the one of the most daring, courageous dance in the world. This is beautiful. This is what Hawaii is all about. Just the title is very, it's a very big title in the, in the islands. It means a lot to be a world champion. There's a lot of people in this world. To be the best at that is an amazing feeling. My father is actually a fire knife dancer as well. He was traveling around the world doing fire knife dancing. I started to dance in a Tahitian dance group called Toa River. In this dance group, everybody danced with the fire. 11 years I've been dancing fire knife dance. I love it so much that I stopped to be a Tahitian dancer and just be a fire knife dancer. Every year, actually, I try to add some, uh, some new moves, like two or three moves, because if you don't add some new tricks, it's very difficult, and the other competitors are so great, so you have to keep it up, too. I wish to come every year. If you want to meet the best and become one of the best, you have to compete with the best. You know? It made me very, very proud being a Polynesian. And you need not be Polynesian to feel uh, excited, uh, and certainly have your spirits uplifted. You see this young man, uh, Michaele, win again for the second time in a row. That's awesome. This year was very, very tough. It's very good feeling. It's a good competition. Yes. Overlooking the Alawai Yacht Harbor, the Chart House Waikiki Restaurant has been a visitor favorite since 1969. Our menu features the finest dry-aged New York steaks, grilled to perfection, along with famous kahuku prawns and herb-crusted ahi. And complete your meal with our signature lava cake. Enjoy live Hawaiian music nightly with two happy hours every day. For good food, good friends, and good times, come home to the Chart House Waikiki. During wartime, the ancient Hawaiians recognized Makahiki as a time of peace and celebration. They feasted, enjoyed spirited games of skill and agility, and danced the hula, all to the delight of the Hawaiian people. Today, you can experience the magic of Makahiki at Paradise Cove. Bring the entire family and enjoy fun arts and crafts, ono food, and the best hula show in Hawaii. The spirit of Makahiki is alive at Paradise Cove. You don't need a passport to get the best foods from Japan. You can get it right here at Waikiki Yokocho. Let's check it out. Perfectly crafted and delightfully delicious, musubis are highly sought after and can be found at Shichi Musubi. Made fresh every day, delicate preparation and attention goes into every musubi. The organic omusubi rice, red, brown or white, it's healthy, fresh and the best tasting. Ingredients range from unagi, ume, tuna, vegetables, and more. It's the perfect handheld snack to satisfy your hunger on the run or during a moment of zen. A question that I often ask my students is, why do you wear all these greenery and ferns on their body? And they tend to forget that the plants give us the oxygen to breathe. Without the oxygen to breathe of the plants, there's no breath, no life, life ceases to exist. That's how important hula is to us as a way of life. Hula means to dance. It is really the poetry of the movement, uh, utilizing your feet and your hands to tell a story. Something that's in your heart. Yeah, it's built on love. So you need to have this love. So hula in itself is really an imitation of our culture through recounting events and bringing them back alive through dance. You know when the visitors see the hula? Um, they say, wow, so beautiful. But for us, we believe that hula is life. Everything in hula, all our chants, can tell us everything about morals, everything about ethics, everything about our daily life and how to tune into our resources. They try to forget the cement, 
jungle and the asphalt and technology. So Ula is really a way of life for us in our practice. The ancient chants is a whole body of poetry and it will always talk about the land, it's going to talk about the ocean, it's going to talk about the heavens, it will talk about things in nature, all the creatures. Hula will embellish the chant. If it's just an oli, you just hear the voice. If you then see the hula with the chant, hula is telling the story. Kahiko, very simply, it is the ancient farm of Hula, and all those noteworthy occasions surrounding that is encompassed in this movement of Hula, or the art of Hawaiian dance. Hula Awana is the modern dances. There was a period where we were being influenced with instruments and hymns and songs and music. Awana literally means to wander, so we wandered away from our root of ancient perspectives. When Hawaiians wrote, they used a lot of what we call kauna, or deeper meaning. So if it was nighttime and I saw this bright star gleaming at me, and that's what brought us together, then that song would be about that star, but I'm actually talking about you. Back in the late 30s, early 40s, we marketed Hawaii as Polynesia and we had this mixed bag of uh, Pacific cultures. But now we are defining what is truly a uh, Hawaiian dance in Waikiki. So I can sit and watch a hula, and I get so into it when I watch them, you know, because if your mind and soul and heart is in it, you're going to pick up everything that they're trying to express to you. The difficulty of that hula wasn't the performing of the hula, it's the attitude that was carried with it because the emotions are from internal to external. But in today's hula, we tend to want to entertain. So it's more an outward type of performance. That's not what we do in our hala. Our job is just to dance, have fun, in, engage with the audience that way, but don't try to entertain the audience. We as the people of Hawaii are so engaged now. We are practicing more of our culture and our traditions. We are exchanging a lot of ideas. We got tons of people speaking Hawaiian again. I mean, if that's not a success, I don't know what is. At some point in time, you know, the pure Hawaiians will no longer exist. And so what we will have left is our culture, our knowledge, our wisdom, our olelo, our language. So it is a very heightened time and a very important time for us. Aloha. Immerse yourself in the authentic flavors of Hawaii right here in the Outrigger at Hula Grill Waikiki. Enjoy chef-driven cuisine inspired by and sourced from our local fishermen and farmers, bringing you the freshest ingredients from our aina to enjoy with Waikiki's best restaurant view of Diamond Head. Get your day of adventure off to a delicious start with banana macadamia nut pancakes or our famous local moko. And when it's time to wind down, savor a breathtaking sunset with fresh pupus like our famous ahi poke tacos, handcrafted cocktails, and your choice of our original culinary creations featuring the freshest local line caught fish, Oahu grown produce, and all natural meats. Hula Grill Waikiki invites you to steal a moment away from the hustle and bustle and savor the true spirit of aloha. Your tropical fantasy awaits you at Jermaine's Luau, located on a private secluded beach 35 minutes and 100 years away from Waikiki. Meet the royal court, then get into the swing of things. Enjoy an all-you-can-eat feast, and the Polynesian show extravaganza will take you on a musical tour of Hawaii, Tahiti, Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Samoa. Come join us at Jermaine's Luau. Aloha Vacationers! We hope you're having a wonderful time in paradise. Outrigger Resort Club by Wyndham can help you keep 
the fun going. Pick up a Hawaiian souvenir at our desk next to the activity center. Mahalo. to welcome you here to the factory. Uh, we've been at this location here for 50 years. Uh, this year it makes 50 years. Um, as we go through, you can see it's uh, a little cramped now, but uh, we're gonna be eventually, uh, hopefully getting a little bigger place soon. And this is a picture of my grandfather, Sam Sr., who actually started making ukuleles as a hobby in his basement, you know, for family and friends, and eventually blossom to what it is today. Take you on a little tour of the facility. Back here is our uh, storage area where we actually air dry all of our coal wood. Most of our wood is from the Big Island. And we don't speed up the drying process any. It's all, all naturally done. So it can take anywhere from two years up to five, six years for some of the bigger pieces. And then we cut it up into the various parts. As we're cutting the pieces, we're looking at it to see which part of the instrument it'll be uh, best for. Eventually, this will become a top, top or back. So they keep them all together so we get the similar grain patterns. You open it up, you get that same symmetry on both sides. This will be laminated down the center like this. Once we take it off the forms, you got your two sides there. And here you can see the green pattern there. Each of our ukuleles has a serial number, and then we stamp the date that it was started on there. So my, my dad actually taught us how to check, make sure you have the right tone coming out of there, just by tapping on it. One of our employees has been working here for over 50 years. Um, He's, he's our final check, actually, and he taps it. He checks whether it's correct or not. And he also does the fretting, and he marks off where the bridge is gonna go. The thing unique about George is that he's deaf. And he can tell simply by feeling the vibrations. So he's been working for us for over 50 years. But, you know, my dad taught him in the beginning just what to feel for. Ukulele itself was first introduced to the islands by the uh, first Portuguese immigrants that came to work in the cane fields and the pineapple fields. And with them, they brought their instruments, a uh, few known as the Machete de Braga. The Hawaiians were so fascinated by these uh, people playing the instrument with their fingers moving up and down the scale that it reminded them of a jumping flea. And so that's what ukulele means, is a jumping flea. To us, it's very, you know, humbling, you know, just to see how the instrument has taken off. Just to see smiles on people's faces, you know. You know we're just so happy to bring a lot of happiness to other people, you know. Good to go. Inspired by the art of the Pacific Islands. No, I know. No, I know. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Color and comfort. Noa Noa. Feel the spirit of Polynesia. Noa Noa. From morning to night. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Always elegant. Noa Noa. So this is the corn of the kalo, and um, we cooked it for two hours. And now what I'm doing is I'm going to do the first rough clean. 
I'm taking out the outer skin. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the knife, and in, in old Hawaii they use the shells, the opihi shells, to scrape, but good way to practice our Hawaiian values of aluhike, working together, kokua kahi, ike kahi, help one another. Okay, now we're gonna go kui. Here we have our kalo that we had cooked, steamed, that is ready to be pounded. This is our papa kui ai. It's made out of uh, a monkey pod. And this is our pohaku kui ai, made out of stone. Pohaku is stone, kui is to pound, and ai is to eat, yeah? So papa kui ai, pohaku kui ai. Grab some pieces of kalo. And then we don't really start pounding right away. What we want to do is we want to use the round part of the the pohaku and smash it. Aloha and welcome to the outrigger in world famous Waikiki. You are just steps away from Duke's Waikiki, the heartbeat of our beach and the most celebrated restaurant in town by locals and visitors alike. The legendary spirit of Hawaii's favorite son, Duke Kahanamoku, lives on here in our warm hospitality and fresh island flavors. It's the perfect place to take in the magic of Waikiki sitting amongst Waikiki Beach Boys, indulging in a signature Mai Tai, or savoring an island dining experience unlike any other. For a special treat, top the night off with an original Kimo's hula pie, and time it right to catch a Dukes on Sunday performance by Henry Capono that will have you dancing as the sun sets behind the surfers. Duke, a true ambassador of the Aloha spirit, taught us the beauty of welcoming you, our visitors, home to Hawaii. We look forward to celebrating life with you during your stay at the Outrigger and hope to see you downstairs for breakfast to hula pie. Aloha Vacationers! We hope you're having a wonderful time in paradise. Outrigger Resort Club by Wyndham can help you keep the fun going. Pick up a Hawaiian souvenir at our desk next to the activity center. Mahalo! They would pound for like all day long, you know, to feed everybody in the village, yeah? Everybody would have their own job and say, your job was to eat. This is what you would do all day long to feed your village or your family. And here we go. This is Paiai. Our kuleana, our responsibility to make sure that we teach our keiki, our children of today, to walk humbly on the earth and, and treat the earth um, with respect because the earth is what gives us life. The people of Hawaii, we are the kalo that are planted in this aina. And so we are the ones who have that kuleana to take care of the land, to preserve what we have, and to pass on to the next generation um, the treasures of Hawaii so that Hawaii will continue to live. Overlooking the Alawai Yacht Harbor, the Chart House Waikiki Restaurant has been a visitor favorite since 1969. Our menu features the finest dry-aged New York steaks, grilled to perfection, along with famous kahuku prawns and herb-crusted ahi, and complete your meal with our signature lava cake. Enjoy live Hawaiian music nightly with two happy hours every day. For good food, good friends, and good times, come home to the Chart House Waikiki.
Mike's Hooli Chicken was featured on an episode of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives with Chef Guy Fieri. So I'm here on the beautiful island of Oahu. I have driven by this place over a hundred times, and this is the place that inspired me to get my own Hooli Hooli Chicken machine. Ooh, what's that? Mike's Secret Sauce. Dude, I am telling you what, this is even better than I remember it. That's right, this is the original Mike's Hooli Hooli Chicken. Check out the whole menu online at mikeshoolychicken.com. Join me as I explore the history, culture, activities, and dining of Oahu's North Shore. The North Shore is just about one hour outside of Waikiki. To get there, take the H1 Freeway West to the H2 North. Follow the signs to Wahiwa and the North Shore. Pretty soon you'll see signs pointing to Haleiwa Town. North Shore actually is quite a very significant historical place to the Native Hawaiian people, uh, beginning with Waimea. Waimea means sacred water. Well, um, Haleiwa, which is very well known today, isn't really the name of that place. It's actually known as Wailua. Uh, Haleiwa was the name of a, of a, like a hotel. And it actually got its name changed, but uh, the real name of that area is, is called Wailua, meaning basically two rivers. Now, there, are no, there are no natural lakes, no natural running streams here on the islands of Hawaii, it's all fed by ua or rain. So without rain, there would be no lakes, there would be no rivers. But uh, fortunately, areas like Waimea uh, usually has a good running uh, stream with water. And that's one of the very first places that our ancestors actually settled on the North Shore, uh, making it a very significant place. Inalua is something that is very important to the Hawaiian people. It's actually not a sport, it's a religious activity, it's a way of life. For example, when the Europeans first came here, they noticed that all the villages were empty during the winter time. They thought there was a disease or a famine because there was nobody around, when in fact all the families from the small child to the eldest Elamakuli or oldest person was in the water or at least on the water uh, and on the beaches betting on their favorite surfers. So surfing is very well known today as it was anciently, but again, today it's a sport, a kahalui. Anciently it was a way of life. Now everybody think big. Yeah, big cold ones. This month you'll be in beer heaven at the big Foster's Draft Beer Down Under Party. Every day, noon till closing at the three famous Irish watering holes in Honolulu. Big cold Foster's Draft Beers, just four bucks. And the great big Foster's, just six dollars at Kelly O'Neill's in the Irish Rose in Waikiki and O'Toole's Irish Pub downtown. Think Australian for big ones. Every day, the Down Under Party at the three famous Irish pubs. Foster's, Australian for beer and our language for a great time. Walk into the magical world of a Hawaiian botanical wonderland and feel the earth cradle you at Waimea Valley. Let the fragrance of sweet ginger flowers lead you to the varied heliconia blooms of exotic colors and forms. Listen to the fall of water and let it soothe and renew you. Discover the life of the early Hawaiian people through stories and cultural sites. Waimea Valley, a place of peace and Hawaiian spiritual feeling where Hawaii comes alive. There's really no such thing as the best beach on the island. They're all great, but here are just a few. Waikiki Beach is not just a beach, it's actually a series of beaches. 
At the very east, you've got Kaimana Beach. That's closest to Diamond Head. Then at the very west, you've got Kahanamoku Beach, which is named for Duke Kahanamoku. Waikiki used to be a barrier beach. It used to be between the wetlands and the ocean, and the wetlands were filled in to build the Alawai Canal, which is what made the resort area that's here now. Waikiki is the place where a lot of people get their first surfing lesson, where they first start stand-up. Uh, it's great for snorkeling, swimming, it's great for everything. Ala Moana Beach Park is one of the most popular beach parks in Honolulu. The waters are very calm and shallow. It's got a 2,000 meter swim course, so you'll see people swimming there, you'll see people doing stand-up paddle there, and a lot of families. Um, there's a big, nice, grassy park, and people will come and park there on a weekend day with their families. Panama Bay is not just a beach park, it's actually a nature preserve and it's administered by both the city and the state. Um, the water is very pure and very clean and there's this incredible array of ocean life living there. It's actually a volcanic crater and the outer rim of the crater has been breached by the ocean and this was thousands, hundreds of thousands of years ago, so the ocean flooded the crater floor and the bay was created. Hanama Bay was showcased in Blue Hawaii, which was one of Elvis Presley's most famous movies. For over 25 years, Hawaiian accessories have been designing and creating Hawaii's most distinctive collection of authentic koa wood products. We have the largest selection of original koa products available in Hawaii. Heirloom boxes, bowls, weapons, and paddles. Our exclusive koa jewelry offers unique Hawaiian designs at affordable family prices. We also carry other made in Hawaii products from several local artisans including Niihau shell jewelry, Tahitian pearl and shell jewelry, ceramics, and one-of-a-kind items. A koa gift from Hawaiian Accessories will forever remind you of these magical islands and be cherished for generations. You'll always receive a warm Hawaiian welcome at Hawaiian Accessories. Aloha. During wartime, the ancient Hawaiians recognized Makahiki as a time of peace and celebration. They feasted, enjoyed spirited games of skill and agility, and danced the hula, all to the delight of the Hawaiian people. Today, you can experience the magic of Makahiki at Paradise Cove. Bring the entire family and enjoy fun arts and crafts, ono food, and the best hula show in Hawaii. The spirit of Makahiki is alive at Paradise Cove. Kailua Beach is one that you're always going to see on the best beaches listings in magazines and on websites. It's very long, it's on the windward side of the island, and at the sand there is really hard and tightly packed, so a lot of people like to go running there at low tide. It does get pretty crowded, but really only on the weekends and the holidays. The trade winds are always blowing at Kailua, so that keeps it very cool and it also makes it very good for certain kinds of water sports like windsurfing. Malai Kahana State Park is right on the ocean and it's right between Malai Kahana Beach and Laie Beach and they're both really beautiful, really sandy, they're very secluded. What you'll see there is a lot of drift material, which comes in with the trade winds from up north where all of the Japanese fishing boats are.
Waimea Bay is in the heart of the North Shore and it's famous for being a big wave riding spot because in the winter, the surf at Waimea gets really big, like between 25 and 30 feet. And that's when a lot of big wave surfers will come from all around the globe. Um, and that's also when you'll see the Quicksilver Eddy I Cow contest. And that contest was named in Eddie's honor, and it's only held if the surf is 25 feet or higher. Eddie I Cow is the inspiration behind those Eddie Would Go stickers that you'll see, the bumper stickers on cars. He was a lifeguard at Waimea, and he's really a local hero um, who gave his life to save the lives of others. Then in the summer, Waimea is beautiful for swimming and snorkeling. And it's also home of the famous Jump Rock, so people will go up there and it's about a 30-foot drop down to the water. At Waimea, just check in with a lifeguard. There are always lifeguards there, seven days a week, all year round, and uh, just always make sure it's safe to swim. Your tropical fantasy awaits you at Jermaine's Luau, located on a private secluded beach 35 minutes and 100 years away from Waikiki. Meet the royal court, then get into the swing of things. Enjoy an all-you-can-eat feast, and the Polynesian show extravaganza will take you on a musical tour of Hawaii, Tahiti, Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Samoa. Come join us at Jermaine's Luau. If you head all the way out west to Ko'olina Resort, they have four man-made lagoons. The main draw of those is their safety. Even when
with the high surf that you'll see often on the west side, the lagoons are protected by these outer arms and they're always calm and they have sandy bottoms. The resort is private, but the lagoons are open to the public and there's plenty of parking. White Plains Beach is a lesser known beach. It's right in the middle of what used to be the Barber's Point Naval Air Station. Uh, it's really nice. It's a lovely white sand beach. It's really good for finding shells, for sunbathing. People go there to swim. And some even call it the Waikiki of the west side because the inside breaks are actually really good for beginning surfers. People from all over the island go to White Plains. To get there, just head west on the H1 freeway and take the Kapolei cutoff. Regardless where you end up, remember to consider safety first, and also to treat your natural surroundings with aloha. Now everybody think big. Yeah, big cold ones. This month you'll be in beer heaven at the Big Foster's Draft Beer Down Under Party. Every day, noon till closing at the three famous Irish watering holes in Honolulu. Big cold Foster's Draft Beers, just four bucks. And the great Big Foster's, just six dollars at Kelly O'Neill's in the Irish Rose in Waikiki and O'Toole's Irish Pub downtown. Think Australian for big ones. Every day, the Down Under Party at the three famous Irish pubs. Foster's, Australian for beer and our language for a great time. Aloha. Immerse yourself in the authentic flavors of Hawaii right here in the Outrigger at Hula Grill Waikiki. Enjoy chef-driven cuisine inspired by and sourced from our local fishermen and farmers, bringing you the freshest ingredients from our aina to enjoy with Waikiki's best restaurant view of Diamond Head. Get your day of adventure off to a delicious start with banana macadamia nut pancakes or our famous local moko. And when it's time to wind down, savor a breathtaking sunset with fresh pupus like our famous ahi poke tacos, handcrafted cocktails, and your choice of our original culinary creations featuring the freshest local line caught fish, Oahu grown produce, and all natural meats. Hula Grill Waikiki invites you to steal a moment away from the hustle and bustle and savor the true spirit of aloha.
Aloha Vacationers. We hope you're having a wonderful time in paradise. Outrigger Resort Club by Wyndham can help you keep the fun going. Pick up a Hawaiian souvenir at our desk next to the activity center. Mahalo. Giovanni Palace is the last official residence of the monarchs of the Kingdom of Hawaii. We guide our visitors around the palace as King Halakala would have after the palace was finished. King Halakala had the palace built as a message to the world that we were a strong independent nation that could deal diplomatically and economically with nations around the world. Halakala loved to entertain in the dining room. If you had arrived in Hawaii, you would have been expected to call on the king, especially if you were any kind of important person. Kalakala liked to sit in the middle of the dining table because that let him converse with all of his guests so he could get to know them better. Lidio Kalani wanted a new constitution. She was introducing it at the request of her people a group of 13 local businessmen who felt their interests were being threatened by that constitution banded together and deposed the queen. She was imprisoned in Iovani Palace for a period of a little under eight months. While there, she was allowed no writing materials initially. She began the quilt to speak to the future with thread and fabric about who she was and what had happened to her. Our basement galleries contain artifacts, items used and worn by members of the royal family. What we hope a lot of our visitors go away with is how Hawaii's 19th century history as an independent nation affects Hawaii today. It is the only official residence of royalty you'll be able to visit in the United States. Inspired by the art of the Pacific Islands. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Color and comfort. Noa Noa. Feel the spirit of Polynesia. Noa Noa. From morning to night. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Always elegant. Noa Noa. What happens when you get three Irish together on Oahu? $4 Killian's Irish Red. From opening time into the night, big frothy Killian's Irish Red beer, just four bucks at the three famous Irish watering holes, Kelly O'Neill's in the Irish Rose Saloon in Waikiki and O'Toole's Irish Pub downtown. This week, the red wave of Killian's at the three Irish, just four bucks, big ones. And what else? You'll love the friendly atmosphere. Enjoy. The $4 Killian's Red Wave, this week at Kelly O'Neill's, the Irish Rose and O'Toole's. Overlooking the Alawai Yacht Harbor, the Chart House Waikiki Restaurant has been a visitor favorite since 1969. Our menu features the finest dry-aged New York steaks, grilled to perfection, along with famous kahuku prawns and herb-crusted ahi, and complete your meal with our signature lava cake. Enjoy live Hawaiian music nightly with two happy hours every day. For good food, 
good friends, and good times, come home to the Chart House Waikiki. Mission Houses Museum is one of the most important places to learn about 19th century Hawaii. The changes that came about after Captain Cook uh, were immense. We have more Hawaiian language books than any other library in the world, and we have many of the original uh, letters and journals of the missionaries beginning in the 1820s, and uh, those documents really form uh, a corpus of information that uh, you can't find anyplace else. The missionaries came in 1820, just a year after Kamehameha had died and the kapu system had been overturned. This is a place where the royalty uh, hung out a lot. They were really fascinated with the story of Christianity that the missionaries had to uh, tell, but they were also fascinated by uh, missionary dress, they were fascinated by missionary food, everything about Western life they were fascinated by. And so they came here to learn those sorts of things. In order for them to teach Christianity, the missionaries had to first uh, create a written language. Because according to the missionaries, you had to be able to read the Word of God in order to be, uh, become a Christian. And so the only way to do that was to read the Bible. So we have a reproduction of the printing press that began the whole history of printing uh, on, in the Hawaiian Islands. This quaint little press revolutionized uh, Hawaii, really. By 1853, 75% of all Hawaiians could read and write. It was the second most literate nation in the world next to Scotland. The Mission House of 1821 tells the story of uh, the missionaries living together sort of in a communal way in the first few years that they lived here. They had a common table where all the families sat at. They came as a, com a community that shared everything. They didn't own anything privately, they owned everything in common. This is such an important place in, in Hawaii. You really can't understand today's Hawaii without coming here and really understanding the role of the missionaries. So this is where you can come and learn that story. We have tours on the hour beginning at 11 o'clock and ending at 3 o'clock. Bishop Museum is Hawaii's oldest and largest museum, and it is a very comprehensive collection of both cultural material, meaning relating to human cultures, as well as natural history. The Bishop Museum campus has a variety of buildings, both old and new. There are the historic older buildings, the Hawaiian Hall Complex, and that includes Hawaiian Hall, Polynesian Hall. Then there's the planetarium. It's really an outstanding planetarium for the Pacific. And finally, there's the Science Adventure Center, which is aimed at natural sciences, and particularly for the Hawaiian culture. There are many connections to the plants and animals and the natural environment, and that comes out in the Science Adventure Center as well. Hawaiian Hall is the largest exhibit space in Bishop Museum. So what visitors see is a very broad overview of Hawaiian culture going back to its mythical beginnings, and then finally ending on the third floor with a historical overview of what happened after Western contact, coming up to pretty much around the present day. There's so much wonderful stuff to see and read about and listen to. It's so rich, it's so detailed. A great many people have written in our visitor comment book what a tremendous experience it has been to take the trip from Waikiki to come to Bishop Museum. They really do have a good time. It's all exciting to me. The Honolulu Academy of Arts is the premier visual arts museum of Hawaii. This building was opened in 1927. The building echoes Hawaii's place in the Pacific, and the galleries are arranged around a series of courtyards. Uh, we have the uh, Chinese courtyard, and around the Chinese courtyard are the Asian art galleries, and then we have the Mediterranean courtyard, and around that courtyard, are the European and American art galleries. We always have at least five exhibitions going on. It's a great place for visitors to come because they can see art of Hawaii, art by Hawaii artists. There are internationally recognized masterpieces here by Van Gogh, Matisse, Monet. We 
have artwork from Picasso to Masami Taraoka, who's probably Hawaii's best known resident artist. It's a total overview of all the exciting trends in art um, from the 20th century. Artists and museum professionals have come here and just been awed by what they find here in the middle of the Pacific. We're very accessible to Waikiki. The public bus and the Waikiki trolley both stop right in front of the museum. We are open Tuesday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and Sunday, 1 to 5 p.m. And admission for the general public is $10. here at the Waikiki Beach Walk Plaza. Our mission is really to promote the beauty of our culture and how we enjoy our music. La Mele No Napua translates to music for our generations, for it doesn't discriminate whether it's the past, the present, or the future. Because it's the heartbeat of Aloha, heartbeat of our people. It's a universal language and how we can share our culture with our visitors, even with our locals. And in the words of keeping it Hawaiian, keeping it local, keeping our music intact and making sure that we can benefit by sharing this with all of our generations, from the past, into the present, into the future, it's not always just about the music, but it's one way that people and our visitors can tap into our, our people through the music and be able to have that relationship and build that relationship over time. open exhibits like this. This is pretty powerful and pretty memorable to say the least. And the Grammy Museum has never smelled so good. <laughs> I can tell you that. Hello everyone. <laughs> For the Hawaiians, our impact on the world has been for hundreds of years. A little group of rocks in the middle of the Pacific. We're here today to celebrate another thing that's initiating something significant that the Hawaiians have contributed specifically to the music world.
another guy playing lead. Well, with slack key, you get to do both. You actually have the guitar hold a chord for you. So now the guitar is holding a chord. So what I'll do is with my thumb, I'll create an alternating bass line like this. And that'll go through the whole song. It just keeps going like a clock. And over that, you weave a simple melody like I was doing. <laughs> and then you play them at the same time like this. So that's what Slack is. reciprocating and being and living aloha today. Mahalo. Your tropical fantasy awaits you at Jermaine's Luau, located on a private secluded beach 35 minutes and 100 years away from Waikiki. Meet the royal court, then get into the swing of things. Enjoy an all-you-can-eat feast, and the Polynesian show extravaganza will take you on a musical tour of Hawaii, Tahiti, Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Samoa. Come join us at Jermaine's Luau. Aloha Vacationers! We hope you're having a wonderful time in paradise. Outrigger Resort Club by Wyndham can help you keep the fun going. Pick up a Hawaiian souvenir at our desk next to the activity center. Mahalo! I'm Makana, and here we are in my home, near Kaimuki. The style of guitar that I grew up playing is called Hawaiian slack key guitar. We call it slack key because, first of all, the way of tuning it, we slack the keys or loosen the keys into a chord. And the reason for doing that is um, by tuning the guitar to a chord, it frees up the hand so I don't have to hold a chord anymore. It allows uh, the player's hand to be free to alter the sound. It's also a way of playing where the player simulates a bass, rhythm, and melody simultaneously. So in essence, slack key guitar is simulating two or three guitars on a single guitar. And when you listen to it, it sounds like that. It sounds very symphonic. It's a music that conveys the essence of Hawaii. And you could be sitting uh, in a flat in New York or Tokyo or anywhere in the world and 
put on that Hawaiian song and it gives you a sense of place, a sense of feeling. Eventually in the 20th century, sometime around mid-century, the slack key guitar artist started to record. Of course, one of the most famous recordings is Gabi Pahinui singing Hi'ilave. As they began to record, as I mentioned before, the Hawaiian Renaissance came about of music and culture, and so this slack key guitar art form became uh, adopted as a national folk art. And today, many of the masters have passed away, but the style is still alive, it's still thriving. Slack key guitar, uh, when I was growing up learning it, it was a very strict discipline. I was taught by the masters, and in order to learn it, there were certain things, certain disciplines that you had to acquire and master. So for me, playing Hawaiian music goes beyond just uh, music. It goes into a realm of this eternal perpetuation of the pure essence of Hawaii. No matter what happens with the physical Hawaii, Hawaiian music always contains that spirit of Hawaii, and it's eternal, yeah, it never changes, so it can always convey it no matter where you are or who you are. And that to me is magic. Walk into the magical world of a Hawaiian botanical wonderland and feel the earth cradle you at Waimea Valley. Let the fragrance of sweet ginger flowers lead you to the varied heliconia blooms of exotic colors and forms. Listen to the fall of water and let it soothe and renew you. Discover the life of the early Hawaiian people through stories and cultural sites. Waimea Valley, a place of peace and Hawaiian spiritual feeling where Hawaii comes alive. There was a kind of a dichotomy in the ancient Hawaiian universe between the realm of people and the realm of the gods. The Wau Kanaka was the realm of people. Kanaka is a person in Hawaiian. And that was in the lowlands, next to the sea, next to your agricultural fields and your house. Um, and the Wauakua, the realm of the gods, was in the uplands, where that which grew was not as a result of human effort. I mean, it was a result of a higher power. In ancient Hawaii, um, the protocols for entering native forests were pretty rigorous. You never went there, really, unless you had a really good reason to, to go there. Uh, one would leave the comfortable realm of people behind, enter into the realm of the gods, essentially, um, and ask permission to enter. Uh, this would be accompanied by chant. So here we are up in the Ko'olau Mountains, which is the backdrop over Honolulu. And today we're going to be talking about Hawaiians and the natural world and the way that the natural world interweaves so tightly in Hawaiian culture. This is a koa tree. Koa is dominant, especially in the lowland mesic forest. Mesic is one of those words that means not too wet and not too dry. Koa loves those middle conditions. And uh, this one's a fairly hefty one for the island of Oahu. It's those massive koa trees that form the hulls of the voyaging canoes. Koa is also the Hawaiian word for warrior. The fierceness and the steadfastness of a warrior is embodied in this tree. Just about every single native plant in the Hawaiian forest has a story about its use and its significance in Hawaiian culture. 
This is Pukiave, and it's a native shrub. It's a heather, and it grows anywhere from low elevations like this all the way up to tree line at nearly 10,000 feet on the island of Hawaii. So it's a very versatile and hardy shrub. The wood of the Pukiave is very flammable. In ancient times, and even to today, the ashes and the smoke of the Pukiave are used to uh, temporarily lower the status of high-ranking people. In ancient times, the Hawaiian uh, chiefs would have what is called mana, it's called spiritual presence or power, and the pukiave was used to temporarily lower the mana of high chiefs in order for them to be able to interact with folks of different levels of, of spiritual power. We've run across one of the most famous trees in the Hawaiian flora. Um, this is sandalwood. It was one of the first economic crops in, in Hawaii. One of the interesting things about Hawaiian plants is that they're usually full of pigments. This one might be might yield a really nice orange brown or yellowish brown dye. So I'm going to take some of these um, some of these cuttings and see what I can make of it a little bit later. In Hawaiian thought, uh, all of the plants and animals um, are the physical manifestations of, of thousands of gods and goddesses. This plant is called Naupaka Kuahivi. Down at the shore, um, there's an ocean shrub with much larger, shiny leaves. Um, that's called Naupaka Kahakai. Kahakai means at the ocean side. So the Naupaka Kahakai is the ocean equivalent, and Naupaka Kuahivi is its counterpart here, way up in the uplands. In Hawaiian thought, the uplands are considered masculine and the ocean side is considered feminine. And so if you were going to ascribe a gender to this plant, um, Hawaiian tradition would say that this is the man and the woman would be the naupaka kahakai down at the ocean. You can pick one of these flowers, rush down to the seaside, pick another flower from the ocean naupaka, put them together and they'd be made whole again. Ah, here we have pala'a. Um, it's one of the favorites for lei making. Um, for all its delicate features, if you pick the pala'a, it will maintain this fresh green look for days, um, if you treat it right. The ohi'alehua, which is the name of this tree, um, is named for its flower, the lehua. The lehua is the intensely red blossom of the ohi'alehua tree. Ohi'alehua is the dominant tree in Hawaiian wet forests. The blossoms are beautiful to look at, quite delicate though. This is the symbol of the volcano goddess Pele. Um, and so if you're hiking in the forest, uh, picking a lehua is actually a fairly dangerous thing to do. The ohi'alehua is the main tree in Hawaiian wet forests, and so it's essential in our watersheds. Um, our watershed forests are why we have such high quality water in Hawaii. To either side of this trail are thick mats of uluhe fern. This is one of the most prolific kinds of native ferns that you find in Hawaii. They can form, you know, a dense mat, a meter or even more in height. In Hawaiian thought, uh, all of the plants and animals um, are the physical manifestations of, of thousands of gods and goddesses. There is a goddess Hina. Hina is the wife of Ku, god of war and governance. If you enter the forest with ill intent or with improper protocol, it's said to come and grow and surround you and you never leave the forest. Over here, we're literally just a few meters away from what was extremely rich and beautiful native forest and we see the dark side of Hawaiian forest now. In an environment as benign as Hawaii, whenever you bring in a new species and it finds a niche that it likes, without its natural enemies in place, it can proliferate without control. It's a very sad thing and it's one of the major threats to our native Hawaiian forest. I find myself, whenever I'm working in a remote area doing conservation biology, surrounded by the native plants and animals that I know 
had cultural uses by ancient Hawaiians and that still, that still have powerful significance to me personally today. We're talking about an island system that had millions of years to evolve before the first people got here, the ancestors of Hawaiians. It stands on its own as a biological gem on the globe. The 18th annual Duke's Ocean Fest, August 17th through 25th. Sign up now for our new events. Duke's Diamond Head Blue Water Paddleboard SUP Race. 32 Beach Boys compete for the bragging rights to be King of Queens Beach. Cheer on the Keiki in the Matson Menihuni Surf Fest. Bark with the dogs at Calvin and Susie's Going to the Dogs. And don't miss the Outrigger Hotels and Resorts Legends Surf Classic and more. Presented by Hawaii Tourism and support the Outrigger Duke Kahanamoku Foundation. Go to dukesoceanfest.com. You don't need a passport to get the best foods from Japan. You can get it right here at Waikiki Yokocho. Let's check it out. Looking to sit back, relax, and enjoy a spirited beverage or some cool Japanese drafts? Nomu is the place to be. Nomu has the finest collections of Japanese whiskey in Waikiki. Partake in these appetizers and drinks. Serving unique cocktails, signature drinks, like the matcha old fashioned, topped with a gold leaf, and specialty whiskeys. This is the one stop shop to decompress and unwind.